Hello, my name is Ben, and you are watching Sunday Fun Day. What we're going to do is I'm going to get back basically right back to where I left off and <clears throat> um, I want to have a bit of a jam session, a bit of a long jam session, depending on how long this recording is. We may extend this recording across uh, multiple episodes. Uh, that way it doesn't get too lengthy. Uh, you know, I like hour long jam sessions, too, but it's it'd be interesting to see, uh, you know, how I could kind of focus around, you know, maybe a 20, 30 minute mark um, per uh, episode and just kind of see what it sounds like, you know, what it is like. Also want to highlight I got a little bit of a new setup for my vocal chain. Uh, so just to highlight that for a second, um, we have our uh, 1176 emulation catching a super fast compression just in case really by about 10 to 15 db depending on what i personally do with my p's and t's and s's and all the good shit that tends to uh, make things clip then i got an ssl channel cleaning some things up <clears throat> that's mainly it and then um I also got uh, just some general compression happening with the LA-2A emulation and then a gate uh, getting rid of the room uh, background noise. So uh, that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about today is doing what we were doing, which is um, we were digging into uh, some of my favorite new stuff, both new and old, uh, but uh, we're going to start out by... First, digging into the toy box note sequencer. So now that we got some sensible volume happening, let's give us some width. And this NHT oscillator is such a beast. Uh, the scan parameter. The A and the B parameters. And these can be modulated. Linear crossfade between NHT and ring output. Standard output of the block ring is the NHT output with analog ring modulation based on the shape of the oscillator. This helps reinforce the fundamental pitch as the bass frequency could be lost while tweaking the parameters. So, very cool. Very cool. Cool, cool, cool. like to do is play around with this uh, but also um, today we're gonna focus on uh, getting some sequencers set up but um, sequencers that play with different kind of timing and different um, how can I say basically uh, harmonies between like different bass notes and like a melody so um, this is a pretty cool like octave A, like yay. But what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to stop this. I'm gonna hold down, I'm gonna view the A on this first. And I'm gonna hold down on my keyboard uh, because I want to, I wanna go ahead and program some new notes into this thing. So let's start with what I hope is an A here. And then an E, I think, for the next one. And then a C. That's what I'm going for. A, E, C. So let's do it in the octave up. 
Uh, that was wrong, so I'm gonna click back on this and correct that. All right, and then we'll start again up here. So let's go. Uh, no, that's good. And then, um, and then we'll go. And then we'll go again. A, B, e, C. And then A. Let's just go C on that. Like a C. And that is wrong. That needs to be A, E. Well, let's find it. Uh, so A, E. There we go. E1. So just programming these using your keyboard is what is, you know, the best thing to do. And to make it a little bit more realistic, I'll throw some B-roll on here that, um, you know, uh, has um, basically it, it, it'll illustrate what I'm trying to what I'm trying to say here, which is that. I'm not, it seems like these kind of pitches are falling in here magically. But I chose all those. I chose all those using notes on my keyboard. And how I did that was I right clicked on like this first note. And then um, I held. So right click and hold and then play a MIDI note on your keyboard. And then set the pitch of that step via MIDI. And also, you know, along with that, you know, so you don't have to click on each step. You can actually just click and hold step one and set all 16 pitches. You know what I'm saying? Um, at, in, in one go. Um, basically just using notes on your keyboard. So let, let me kind of do that again. Um, I didn't really talk through it all that much without explaining it. So that's what I'm basically doing. I'm, I, you know, I click and hold this uh, first note. So say I want to go A1. And then say that's the goal. I, I hit A1 on my MIDI keyboard. And then while I'm still right click and holding on my mouse, I hit the next one in line. So say I want to go E2 and C2. And then here we go, repeat the same thing. And I just want that last one to be C3. So, and that one changed for some reason, but that's it. You know what I mean? Just like in a, in a matter of moments, you know, you right click and hold the first step in the sequencer and then hit 16 notes on your keyboard and the toy box note sequencer is fully set up. Cool. So um, that's essentially what, you know, the, the one of the first things I wanted to cover off in this kind of first segment. And then let's just let's go ahead and pull some things in intuitively and, and get rid of some things that we know we're not going to need. Uh, like the scope, we can. We can take this guy out of here. How's that not working? I don't want to view A. I want to remove. Ah, edit. So, um, that's what we want to do. We want to edit this guy and go ahead and get that guy out of here. So hopefully that volume's coming through all right. Sounds like it is to me. Go up a little bit, perhaps. We can still talk over it a little bit. 
Not so much, actually. <laughs> we'll come down just a tad.
So, uh, what I want to do now is essentially work in um, a melody that can change through the use of a bass note, essentially. And I'd like to toy around with some of the blocks in the Euro React library. Okay, so let's uh, start hearing some sound with this. We need to get... So I actually kind of think I did rather need that toy box mixer now that I pulled it out of here. So let's pull it back in here. Actually, tell you what we need. It's just another of these level mixers, these utility four mixers. So let's go with that. Um, 